Switch back to Game1.cs by clicking the tab if you see it, or double-clicking Game1.cs in the Solution Explorer. We've modified our Game Object class to give us the ability to track an object's motion. Now, we want to use that ability to allow the player to fire cannonballs from their cannon that move across the screen. In order to do this, we need to know what's meant by fire cannonballs. In the simplest sense, that means creating a cannonball object that starts at the cannon's position and has a velocity that is in the direction the cannon is pointing. We could allow the player to fire an infinite number of cannonballs, but that's not very challenging and could also lead to the game slowing down when it has to update a huge number of cannonballs. So, the first thing we want to do is set a limit on the number of cannonballs the player can fire. Scroll to the top of Game1.cs, then down where you declare your variables. Just below where you declare Game Object Cannon, insert the following lines. Const int max cannonballs equals three. Game object open square bracket close square bracket cannonballs. There are new concepts in these two lines. The first line has the word const in front of it. This means once it's assigned, it cannot be changed. This is good practice for values we only want to set once. In the case of this variable, max cannonballs, it represents the number of cannonballs we can have active at once, three. You can set it to more if you like, but three is a good number to start with. Setting it to const means you can't accidentally change it somewhere else in your code. Doing so will result in an error or crash. The second line has a set of brackets just after the game object type. This means we are declaring an array of game objects, not just one game object. An array is a sequential set of one type of object. With an array, you can loop through all of the objects in it and treat them similarly with one block of code. Let's initialize this array. Scroll down to the load content method where we've done our object initialization for the cannon. Look for the line where you set cannon.position equals new vector2. Below that, add a new line and then type the following. Cannonballs equals new game object open square bracket max cannonballs close square bracket this is an array assignment and it looks like a constructor but there are square brackets rather than rounded parentheses this is because we are initializing cannonballs as an array not a single object the argument between the brackets is a size. It specifies how many objects are in the array. We pass in max cannonballs, so the number will be three. The array will have three objects in it, three elements as they are called. Every single one of them will be a game object. But what is each game object initialized to? You'll remember that to initialize a game object, we must pass it the texture 2D, and that clearly isn't being done here. That's because this line only initializes the array. Each element must be initialized separately. We'll do that next, using a loop. So, just under the line you've just created, add a new line, and then type the following. For, open parenthesis, int i equals zero semicolon i is less than 
max cannonballs semicolon i plus plus close parenthesis open curly brace cannonballs open square bracket i close square bracket equals new game object open parenthesis content dot load open angle bracket texture 2d close angle bracket open parenthesis quotation capital sprites backslash backslash cannonball quotation close parenthesis close parenthesis semicolon close curly brace the statement at the top of this line almost looks like the if statement you've been using except it works differently this is a for statement and you can think of it like a loop the arguments to the statement are in three parts the first part initializes a variable that is used to count through the loop. In this statement, we use the variable i and start at zero. The second performs a test to see if the loop should stop. If the statement is false, the loop will stop. In this statement, i needs to be less than max cannonballs, which is three, or else the loop will stop. The third part changes the counting variable in some way. In this case, the double plus operator next to i is shorthand that means add 1 to i each frame. Every time the middle statement is true, the code inside the curly braces will run. In this case, i will increase by 1 and then the statement in the middle will evaluate again. So, this loop will run a number of times equal to max cannonballs or three times. What will happen each time is defined by the code inside the curly braces. And it looks very much like the content manager.load call you're used to, except it uses the array brackets again. When you reference an array using the brackets, you are actually asking for one of the array elements, which one you get depends on the number you pass between the brackets. Passing zero will get you the first element. One gets you the second, two, the third, and so on. In this case, the variable i, which starts at zero and goes up to two, because it must be less than max cannonballs, or three, is used to index into the array. This is why the for loop is valuable. You can access each array element, one after the other, and run the same code on it without rewriting the code each time. As you can see, the code takes an element from the array, initializes it for a new game object, and passes in the texture 2D object that comes from the cannonball image file. Now, we have an array of three cannonball game objects, initialized and ready to go. Next, we'll get them moving. If you're ready, Move on to the next step.